it, it, it's hard. It's hard. Well, well, you know, I did 12 years and, um, it, you know, you kind of do become a little bit indoctrinated to it. And it, I wouldn't say cotton and wool, but you are looked after. You know, it, it, it's such a, a brotherhood. You know, it's such a family, such a tight-knit community in some ways. Yes, there's all the infighting, you know, and uh, which, which is always amusing. <laughs> in, in some ways. And then, you know, you then leave and it's just like, no one wants to look at you. No one wants to employ you because you've got no civilian industry experience. They think because you're in the armed forces, you just, you just go around killing people and shouting and screaming at people. And mm. yeah, yeah, it took, took me 10 years to almost find the balance back in my life again. Mm. So, um, some people really struggle and others don't. You know, I got, I got other friends that have done like 24 years, 26 years, you know, and you just walk straight into the next thing and they didn't really, you know, and then other people who just, oh, I can't handle this. You know, yeah. I think St Stevie's boy is one of them. Damien, he's really struggled. You know, he's ex-artillery and uh, he'd tell you himself, he's just, you know, can't stand people who are jack, can't stand people who are professional and don't want to get up and go looking for dramas instead of yeah. waiting for you know. And uh, he, he's moaning and chumping all the time about it. But, um, yeah, very, but he, he does work at a phenomenal pace. He is hard to keep up with, you know, the best of time. Steve will tell you that. <laughs> but, um, he's, a, he's a hell of a grafter, but, yeah. But a great guy to have alongside you. Anytime I've done anything, he's always a pleasure having him with me. You know, he's like he's so um, uh, organised and well thinking, and you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and in the army of like 20, 30 years ago, it's completely different to the army of ten, fifteen years ago. You mm. know, it's becoming more of a thinking man's game as opposed mm. to you know who, who who's got the biggest muscles kind of thing. You know, and that, that mm. the ego, the arrogance. And, and certainly, you know, I, you know, I, I was privileged to kind of like work within commando, you know, and airborne forces. So you, you just see the kind of different mindsets from from the normal kind of green forces to actually kind of like specialised fighting bodies, you know. And it's just like, wow, you know, there's such such a difference, you know, such a more maturity um, within that, and, you know. Yeah, and, and that kind of almost gave me hope. <laughs> Obviously, the way we we made that transition. Now, the, 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 that's that's interesting, Barry. You know, the way you put that relates to uh, where I was once on a contract at the Royal Navy in Northfield, uh, mm. doing computer systems for ships. Um, and there, you've got all the different forces. And uh, since I was on contract, I was I had um, I was given the honorary title of lieutenant, so I got in the officers' mess. But you can see the different types of people there. You know, the long-serving soldiers who did it by the book. You know, and yeah. they had a completely different view of life than I did. And it was quite interesting coming away from that, and then seeing what it was, seeing the contrast between that and the civil life, and it's brought very much out to me in the bar and so on. But then I was in contact with a number of other military personnel. Um, some of them have been operational in, in some very hard places um, and so on. And so, uh, in fact, there's a guy at Plant Dowie, he was uh, ex-Navy and uh, he's now really going through it this life, but uh, he's, out, he's out and he, he was invited back to his ship because it was uh, refueling in Pembroke Dock and they were wondering whether he'd be able to get on board, but he couldn't because of his health issues. But you could see how he dealt with life and was very much more professional than the guys I was seeing in Northfield. Uh, and in between the two, it was quite some. It was last century. <laughs> it was last century when I was working in Northfield, and there was, as you say, there's a, obviously a change in character. And I met somebody in the middle of the time about um, twenty years ago now, uh, ten years ago, uh, and he was a Cameroonian who had come to work for the British Army. And he went out. And he was trained in. Um, sort of small arms and, and um, you know the big guns you carry around with you and he he was being trained as a professional soldier in fighting as a fighting machine in the way you were describing um, and I knew he had difficulties integrating back with his family in Africa but you know I could see he was in the middle of what you're saying between somebody who was just sort of uh, fighting as hard as they could and being really physical about it to the people that I've met today like this guy in the Navy who is much more professional as a radio operator and was knowing a lot more and understanding much more about the secret stuff that he was having to deal with and then he, he in the middle who was beginning to learn how to work with the materials that you're given the, the weaponry you had and so on 
and it's interesting to sort of then compare it right back if you want to go back to the Napoleonic Wars and people being um, forced to fight and you know how you had the officers who were coming from a background that really didn't have anything to do with fighting and so it, it's interesting to see how the military things are going through but if we look at us you know I'm looking at the military today who are being put into civilian situations with the COVID virus and they, they were saying that um, you know, see on the television, they were talking about how badly the NHS have organised deliveries of the PPE. Now, you can see why that would come about, but you can see that the military persons are now getting involved in it at a much more personal level uh, and being able to cope in that sort of situation. I think that's a really good development, really, but who knows what's going to happen now. Yeah, I think one of the good things that the, the, the British squad kind of has is the ability to get rid of all the smoke and mirrors and just get right to the task in hand. You know, it's, um, they don't care about all the, all the kind of the gossip and all the kind of naysayers. They just want to get the job done. Uh, and once they get their head screwed on to the task in hand, you know, it, it, it's hard to stop that momentum going on. And, uh, and all, all, all the guys and girls, you know, all the certain, you know, um, forces guys who are involved with it all, all they want to do is just to get their job done, look after the guys and girls next to them, and get home to the families, you know, and they just want to do it in a professional way, and, and you know, and there's a lot of professional experience there. I think if it's a key there, Barry, it's, 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 it seems to me that in the military mind, it's very much teamwork. You know, you, 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 you're shoulder to shoulder with people and you look after the man next to you because he's going to look after you and, and together we're stronger. And I think it's the same thing when we're with the Lord. This is why we have fellowship at church to strengthen each other. So I guess mm -hmm. this is where the sort of um, soldiers of the cross comes from, perhaps. Oh. Yeah. I, well, well, you know, um, John and Steve will probably testify. So like within the forces, you know, you get the church parades going on there is such a kind of a strong bond you know you know with with christ and obviously having having the padre coming in and, and talking to you even when you're on operations and just making sure that you're okay and offering the pastoral support and, and it's, I, I guess for me i didn't really appreciate you know how you know the law was trying to work through the padres and other services when i was serving because you know, I dare say it, the arrogance kind of comes out in you doing what you're doing. And it's like, you go away, you come back, you go away, you come back, you know, and someone else did. And it's just like, well, you know, the clock beat there. Uh, you, know, you, you kind of get that, you almost, you become, I just sorry, you know, quite, quite harsh to it. You know, it's that defensive mechanism. Um, and you, you compartmentalize things because if you allow it to absorb you, and then to control you, then obviously that's where stuff like PTSD then then ensues. But I didn't fully appreciate you know, the pastoral and, and you know the padres doing what they would did really until like plays like times like now and going, wow, you know what? They really did look out for you. They really did try to <laughs> comfort. They really did obviously offer support and guidance and friendship and the fellowship that goes with it. And you, you just you just don't realise it until. Here I here I am now. Well, I left in two thousand and one. Um, you know, so they are now nearly twenty years on. It's going wow, you know. Well, then there really was such a love being shown to me. There really was such a a, a bonding. But then you, you you don't really kind of look at that in the main when you're going off and doing your jobs because it's, it's like no, I've got the job in hand. I need to do A, B, and C, and it's almost you just shut it out. And you become quite blinkered. You know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, John. You know, Steve. You know, you know how was it? For no, you no, guys? no. You're right. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, the uh, you know, you're, you're bang on what you're saying there. And but the you know, there's there's no saying what to say. Um, devil makes work for idle hands, and that's there's no better thing than that. You know, you mm -hmm. remember on any tour I went on, everybody was kept busy all the time with sometimes with mundane tasks. But if you've got a group of men around, like any group of women, they start chimping. This is shit. This, you know, blah blah blah, and all of a sudden everybody's on a downer, you know. And but when you like, right, shift that to the edge, get out there, run yeah. this afternoon. And it's the same with us lot. If you got us lot together, you know, you sat around in the rain for two hours, you all still start moaning. But if you said, like, we're going to do this, this, you get that on. You get, you know, I heard, um, you know, Rob James, a pastor down uh, Westgate years ago, gave a. He was talking about a guy who just passed away from Westgate, and um, he'd been to Bosnia with this guy doing. Um, dropping off supplies in the, in the early 90s to orphanages. And he said, um, 
this guy had been in the military and he, um, his role in the military years ago was a Batman for an officer. I don't know, some of you might know this, some might not, but basically you just, you're like um, a personal assistant to an officer. Yeah, and Rob said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he, and I'll never forget what Rob said about this guy. He said, uh, you know, they, they drove with a, with a lorry load of supplies over to um, Bosnia and um, uh, I think Bosnia or Romania, one of those places, but he said every time they stopped, this guy went around and made sure everybody had a cup of tea, everybody had water, everybody had something to eat before he got his own. And he said at night time, he made sure everybody's beds were out and he had tea on. The minute they stopped, he was running around for other people, making sure everybody was sorted. And he said, you know, uh, he mentioned this at his funeral and the fact that he always put others first and this, and I was thinking, God, what a wonderful way to be remembered. You know, this guy and uh, his daughters went up to him after and said, well, thanks very much for saying all that. And he said, but well, that's the one thing I remember about this guy, that he was, he had that military mindset of making sure the, the whole team were looked after. And he said, then he'd get his own, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was re really interesting too. I can't remember the guy's name now, but it was a great, a great sermon by Rob. Mm. I, think, I, think, uh, I think what you're saying there has a, a basis in personal relationships today outside of the military. You know, if we look at how we can... Yeah serve others and, and, and see where they're happy before ourselves you know this is what i think you know people are missing today you know they're, they're very much me oriented and self-centered and what you're saying that god was doing was certainly not what people tend to do today yeah yeah, yeah, certainly, yeah there is it's that then the materialistic kind of self-centered immediate reward and um, society and mindset that people have you know it's yeah. like I, I see and work with some of the, the managers and team leaders it's almost about me 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 and obviously, then I say to him, says, but how are your team developing? Well, I don't know. So, well, mm -hmm. if your team aren't developing, you know, then obviously it doesn't matter what you try to achieve. You know, it's all about them. It's all about the guys that work for you and the, and the girls that work for you rather than you. You know, it's mm -hmm. not centred on you. And I, and, and I guess I think that's what the armed forces, I think, you know, where it sets apart from the leaders. And certainly, the, you know, the Batman, you know, that, um, you know, it's just that mindset, it's that selfless act, the, the, you know, the selfless service to others. And, mm. and, and again, you know, and that's what it is. And I thought, I thought quite it resonates then as well with my relationship with the Lord. It's that selfless kind of life, you know, that Jesus had for everyone else. And it's like, wow, if I can just have a small bit of that, how much more blessed and honorable will I be? Mm. So, you know, so, so it is, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hell of a thing. It's a hell of a thing to put somebody else first, you know, especially in today because, you know, everyone's got an angle these days. You know, when you just go up to someone and buy it, make them a cup of tea without asking and say, that's for you, you look like you need it. Or, you know, I bought you a sandwich. Or, yeah. you know, whatever random kindness you can do. And, you know, um, there's, there's nothing better when you're really struggling than someone just throwing you a life plan, yeah. an agenda, you know, or, you know, and we, we've all been there. And, I, you know, there's no, I think probably that's, the one thing I enjoy the most is seeing someone who's really struggling and just putting a hand out and saying, whatever it is, you know, you yeah. know, you know, it's only temporary, you again. It's, yeah. only temporary isn't it? it's only temporary. Yeah. It's not mm. permanent. And that's where we are blessed that we know it's not temporary with things that people go through. And that's why you can extend that hand out mm -hmm. and say, here's a cup of coffee, here's a mm. sandwich, but we know there's better for you. Mm. And we know that. Uh, and you, you know, we say we we may be the one who's given them the drink or something like that, but somebody else is going to speak a word into them, is going to release them out of that. We know that they're only being held captive by an enemy, you know, the enemy of our souls, and we know because our souls are being made free that someday they will be. So those actum runs actum acts of kindness resonates in, in their soul because mm -hmm. they will not forget that. Because, yeah. like all of us, when we come to give our testimony, they're the things that brought us to it, to mm. where we are today, to know the Lord. So, you know, and the same as being in the military, that they, they, they want you to focus on your task ahead. Whatever else is going wrong around you is only temporary. The mm. most important thing that is in your life is to focus on what you, the road that you've taken. You've taken to be a soldier and whatever you're going to do. And you work, they want you to focus on that. Everything else around that. I know your, your analogy of blinkers, but they want you to be focused on what you're going to do. Because whatever else is going on around you, 
that hasn't got a mat here. But the only thing they do, and the thing they do teach you as well, is that you don't leave your mate behind. And your mm -hmm. mate doesn't want to stand alongside you or, or whoever. And you are focused on what you do, but you know that it's a team effort. Like I say, it's a team effort. We're, we're oh. doing this together. And it's the same, I think, in the Christian faith. Is this is not about Stevie, and it's not about John, it's not about Barry, it's not about Peter. It's about a, we're gonna if one of us are falling down, I'm gonna grab you and drag you along because we're going to get through that other end. We're gonna get to that place. Um, I just read it. This scripture because I know Adam can't be with us tonight and uh, you know and just pray for Adam uh, tonight you guys because uh, he's going through a bit of a, a rough time which we get sometimes but we need to pull him along with us because it's not going to be permanent whatever's happening is not going to be permanent and I was just thinking before I came because I asked Peter to give a bit of a testimony and Adam was going to open up but I had to start back to work today and I've had so much work to try and catch up with it. But, so I asked Peter because my head would be all over the place. But uh, seeing as Adam isn't with us, I just want to share the scripture. I just would, I thought what we need is some truth and it's the truth that sets us free and keeps us focused. So one of the scriptures that I looked at today was in John 14 and it's Jesus telling the disciples that he is the way. So it's John, it's John 14, verse 1, and then it says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. So we will trust in Jesus. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And I just thought that's interesting that, and, and that the, the word that came to me, really, that is a truth, what Jesus is speaking, which is direct from the Father. So he's going to come and we know where we're going. And the words that spoke to me is that, he said, you know the way. You know the way. We know the way because we've got his word and we've got his example. And we know for all those people, the way. And uh, the, the thing I've always felt is that sometimes is, why did God call me to, be, to follow him? And, and it's the biggest thing that I found. It's nothing about being anything thing. Only do that to people. To point them in a direction and say, if you want to know the way, go this way. Or go have a look in here if you want to know the way. Because all Jesus is, where is it? He is the way. And I, and I just want to encourage us tonight that, you know, the truth is that God is in control. And Jesus is the way. And he is coming back. And he is going to take us. But we do know the way. And we can share that with others. I don't know if uh, Peter wants to share anything because I did ask him to share tonight. So, uh, well, okay, ask... Steve, you know, I have I've yeah. put one or two notes down. <laughs> don't need yeah. to take very long, but um, if you're happy for me to go through a couple of bits and pieces yeah, so you yeah. get to know me a bit better, you know, that would yeah. be great. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Really, it's difficult to know where to start with these things. You know, um, I came to be, I came with to be with Christ. I think when, um, ah, hang on a minute, we're running out of time. It says that we've got to upgrade in ten minutes. Um, I'll see what I can do. Uh, yeah, don't, don't leave it till next week. Don't, don't okay. question that. Oh no. Because I think we've had a good discussion, and uh, what I would like to do right, is for us to just pray for Adam now before we go, and then just ask you know the Lord to be with him at this time, because we can't I can't get a hold of him or anything like that. So he, as far as I know, he's on his own. But we need well, <laughs> I shouldn't say that he's not on his own, is he? 
God's with him, Jesus is with him, his, his strength is there. So we're going to send some prayers up for him. So if any of you want to pray after I've prayed, then please do. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you would be with us wherever we are. You are only a, a breath away from us, Lord. You are nearer to us than we are to you. So, Father, we just pray that you would be close to Adam at this time, wherever he is, Father. That your hand would be upon him, that you would bring peace into the situation where he, where he finds himself. So, Father, we just come against any work of the enemy to steal away his peace. And, Father, to give him mixed messages. We just pray, Jesus, that you would be closer and closer to him as he works through this, Lord, whatever he's working through. So, it's Father, because you are the way, and we know the way, and we know that Adam knows the way. So we lift him up, Lord, and we reach out and grab hold of him, and we drag him along, and we say, come on, brother, get back on your feet, get back in the fight. There's work to be done for the Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Uh, if, if we would let you uh, do next week, Pete, is that right? Yeah, absolutely fine. Is, no problem. Yeah, I mean, you know, so that's the way God works. Sometimes <laughs> He changes everything. <laughs> he changes everything. Yeah, there has changes. to be a purpose as well, you know. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And it's been just good just to share sometimes, and it just talk. Yeah. Oh. And just speak out the things that you hold. Sometimes it just releases it, releases you from those things and that, that, that build up over the weeks. The world is on you and things like that. And it makes you feel pushed down and held down. Yes, but if it's one, one bit of... We want to do like that virus in it. You want to flatten that curve. We want to mm. keep it going ex exponentially upwards. We want to flatten it. We want to... Keep that mountain as flat as we can. Because in the beginning, that's mm. funny, isn't it? In the beginning, the mountain we had was like that. We were going up and like up and up and up. And it was hard work. But we want to flatten it and keep on that plateau. It's always a job because something always comes along to try and push it back. I would, uh, I'd encourage you lads to, to put on your armour in the morning before you go out the house. <laughs> yeah, I really would, all, all of you. I think that's, uh, you know, and don't, don't be afraid to say with a bit of... Bit of, bit of aggression about it as well because you know I, I don't know about you boys but you know every day there's something trying to throw me off the track here trying to wind me up and it shouldn't really be you know there's nothing you know I'm not doing anything at the moment some of you guys Barry's working I'm not Stevie's back in work you know so yeah definitely um, you know, I would encourage you to and, and just think it through as you're saying it as well I think part of day. I think sorry John I think the part of that is important to um have that time with the Lord, but also to try and think what your intent is for the day and be armed mm -hmm. with his word, um, mm -hmm. because his word should prompt, I think, the intent you have for that day. And that gives you a chance to aim right, not be distracted. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right, you're 100% right. You know, um, he, he's, I, uh... I, th I think that the time in the morning should be to keep that hour below one. <laughs> <laughs> Because if it goes above one in the morning, it can be exponential. Your day gets harder and harder. So it's, that's it's funny. Key, it's funny. Uh, you know, I spoke to Adam on read Monday, the words, think, and uh, he said to me, um, "Start." I said, "Oh, some good testimonies now that Peter's put up on YouTube." You know, and we were laughing about you know what because you never hear yourself talking. I said, "Joe, <laughs> they're probably looking at mine and thinking, where they find this guy?'" You know, we're having a laugh about it. But he said to me, you watch yourself now, John. Be very careful because he said, uh, you know, you've really stepped out now putting your testimony on this or so stand by for a backlash. And I just laughed. They said, I'm not afraid of that. And, you know, Adam's had a real tough day today. And, uh, you know, just made me think of that then. That, like, you know, really got to yeah. keep, keep focused. You know, don't, don't take any of this for granted. It is a battle every day. 
and is you know he's, he's trying to throw us off a track all the time try to make us throw a track or every way you can you know so well, I, th- I think this is what makes this, this Friday so important where we can come yes. back and, and share our story yes exactly for just, me personally I feel it's like accountability to, to you to the guys I'm talking to every night I'm, I'm thinking I've got to keep myself there because I've got accountability Friday night we're having a conversation I can't sit here and talk to you if I've been in if I've been in bed Fred all day drinking 10, 20 pints you know and say oh yeah there's a dream for you yeah you know, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it so you know, um, right. I, I'm really, I, I don't know you lads, but I'm really enjoying it. Thank you for your time. Yeah, it's nice uh, to see yeah. see you all as mm. well. It's nice to see faces, mm. uh, you know, and, and just spend a bit of time together. That's brilliant. So, yeah. yeah. So, we'll, same time next week. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. But, and, and listen, guys, um, I'll, I'll keep updated about this. this yeah. Gentleman mm. and, yeah. Um, and so certainly, if, if I need... Um, so someone to to help to get some outreach work yeah. so that I'm making way I'll let you guys know. Whatever see how it goes. Yeah. The thing is right. I could tell you, I could tell you the names and everything, you know, but you know, you know, I'm kind of asked just to keep well, it kind of on the low at the yeah. moment. Yeah, just With, just weigh it up weigh it up and just because uh, we know plenty of people, just ring us anytime. Yeah. 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 If you want to drop drop his, drop yeah. his first yeah. name on the group just for praise, just yeah. his first name. Well, you know, we can well, we can do that and so, so is it, is it, is it, there's a boy called Lee, and it was a guy called Ian who found him. Okay. Well, so, them both in prison. Yes. Yeah. You know, and then that's, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's fair. Well, look, I, I, yeah. It's just one of those things, you know, Ian is yeah. almost he trying to find his faith again. And obviously, yeah. you know, it's funny how the Lord obviously shows you in different ways how he can work through you and with you. And, yeah. and then he went for a, a walk and, and found this guy kind of all new stuff ready and it was just all too much for him but um yeah you know it was just some crazy horrible times that we're in at the moment yeah yeah and, but feel uh, free feel free to contact us yeah you need to. you're all you're all amazing thank you very much god and, bless uh, you buddy god bless you peter god bless you john see you soon yeah. Take have a safe week, buddy. Yeah, good day. Bye. 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 Bye